Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us again this month for our monthly webinar. Um, so we'll be starting right now. I'll just quickly introduce our speaker, who is none other than our president himself, Professor Batai Balogun. Okay, I'm just going to quickly read his uh, read a brief um, biography of Prof and then hand over to him. Okay, so Professor Balogun received his BSc in engineering physics in 1980 from the um, University of Ife, now called Obafemi Awolo University. He received his MSc and PhD in medical physics from the University of Surrey, UK, and became a professor in 2002. His academic career spans over 40 years. And to date, he has supervised um, many undergraduate and postgraduate students. We actually could not count them. At least five of them are now professors. And Prof, of course, is well published. Um, he has served on several expert missions. We have a few of them here to um, Potakot, Radioactivity Contamination at Ilorin. He has once served as the head of Division of Radiobiology and Health Physics. He's a fellow or was a fellow of the Third World Academy of Science at the Institute of Agriculture, Agricultural Instrument, Instrumentation in Brazil, where he helped to set up the Compton Scattering Research Program. He was also a fellow of the Absalam International Center for Theoretical Physics in Italy, where he established the Low Energy Photon Compton Scattering Research in 1999. He's a member of several committees. Among them are the, he served on several committees, I beg your pardon. One of them was the, for the establishment of licensing procedure for nuclear research reactor and reactor operators in Nigeria. He has served as a reporter at a session of the symposium on the application of nuclear technology for socioeconomic development of Nigeria, organized then by the Shedda Science and Technology Complex. He was the pioneer Executive Director of the National Institute of Radiation Protection and Research, which is the technical arm of the Nigerian Nuclear Regulatory Authority, where he helped to establish the secondary standard, standard dosimetry laboratory, the only one in, in Nigeria. And he helped to establish the RSO training program, where when he was there, he helped to train over um, 400 radiation safety officers. Before now, he served as the Director of Radiation Protection and Monitoring Services at the Lagos State University of Joe. And currently, Professor Balogun is a research professor at the Center for Energy Research Development, Obafemi Awolowo University, IFE. He's also a radiation safety advisor to several hospitals. And of course, he's the current president of the Nigerian Association of Presidents. So yes, that is who we have this morning. And uh, we are privileged to have um, Professor Balogun as our president and also as our speaker for the second edition of the monthly of the NAMP monthly webinar. So I'm going to hand over to Prof now for his presentation. Thank you very much. Prof, over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome, everyone, to this month's uh, webinar. And the topic we have that is of interest today is the importance of dosimetry in radiotherapy. Uh, on your screen is the outline of uh, what we intend to discuss today. I'm going to show you a number of uh, textbooks that will be of reference to you. And then from there, we talk about the importance of dosimetry, of getting it right in dosimetry. When, I mean, getting dosimetry right in radiotherapy. We are, then after that, I'm going to talk about basic terms that are used in radiation dosimetry and basic idea in dosimetry. The instrument that are used to measure radiation and the various applications of dosimetry. Here, we have a list of some books of importance, like the Fundamental of Radiation Dosimetry, the Monte Carlo Technique in Radiation Therapy that is very, very good for research work. Then we have Radiation Therapy Dosimetry, and 
all the others as uh, we have on the screen that could be very useful to us both in the clinic and the research sector of medical physics. Importance to uh, predation measurement is the establishment of the International Committee on Radiation Units. And this committee gives guidelines to various national bodies, like we have in Nigeria, the Nigerian Nuclear Regulatory Authority, give directives which are backed by law. The ICRU guideline is not backed by law, it's just a guideline for member states to follow. Um, internationally accepted recommendations by this uh, body are usually included in regulatory requirements for each of the member states. This is from can I do this? In my speech. Okay. Internationally accepted recommendation on radiation related quantities and units, measurement procedures, and reference data for the safe and efficient application of radiation to medical diagnosis and therapy, radiation sciences and technology, and radiation protection individuals and population are recommended by ICRU. The ICRU, uh, in particular, lay emphasis on the delineation of um, uh, the addition of uh, target volumes to which absorb those has to be precise on and reported with that specification of target volumes and volumes is not required, I mean, it's not expected. The ICR recently recommended that the absorbed dose in PTV be confined within 95% to 107% of the recommended dose. That is the, uh, the dose that is recommended by the oncologist. However, this 95% to 107% actually means that we cannot go below 95% of the recommended dose and above 107% of the recommended dose. The reason for this is not far-fetched in that going below it imply that we are under irradiating the tumor and this will lead to regeneration of the tumor. And going above it implies that we are overburdening the normal tissues, which could lead to some risk to the normal tissue. And the secondary, uh, the, the uh, appearance of secondary cancer in the irradiated person. However, with the advent of the intensity modulated radiation radiotherapy, these constraints, I mean, these uh, values seem to be of, uh, uh, offer a lot of constraints to the uh, practitioners. And a new, a new set was uh, recommended it is usually then recommended that the extent of the high and low dose region be specified. That is the D2% and the D98% for regions of high and low absorbed dose. Area where you have low absorbed dose, you expect to have something like 2% of the, of the recommended dose. And in area where you expect to have high dose, then 98, at least 98%. We give for the required homogeneity and uh, the efficiency, efficient treatment of the uh, of the tumor. Often said that as the important importance of uh, dosimetry, I mean of I mean good dosimetry uh, practices in radiotherapy. I would like now to talk about a few terms that are used. In, radio, in, in dosimetry, radiation dosimetry. First, we talk about radiation. What is this radiation? We see it as energy transport from one point to the other in a medium or in, a, in space where there's no even medium. It doesn't require a medium to be transferred, but it can also move 
in medium like the human tissues. We also talk about linear energy transfer, which differentiate, I mean, which give us the average amount of energy lost by unit track length in tissue by a particular type of radiation. Um, as radiation passes through a given matter, how much of its energy is being lost, which will result in the uh, absorbed dose in the patient or in the material concern? How much is, of it is being lost by unit length? This is what uh, we call linear energy transfer. Then we talk about radiation dosimetry, which is radiation dose. How much of this radiation is being is being absorbed in the matter through which the radiation is passing. So we are talking about radiation dose resulting from exposure to NS radiation and its determination by measurement. It could be determined by putting uh, a measuring device in the medium where the radiation dose, I mean dose, dose is supposed to be measured. Or we can do it by calculation. If we know the emission rate, of our sources of radiation and the properties of the matter through which this uh, radiation is passing, we could estimate the amount of dose in a particular uh, medium. Or we can use a combination, especially in radiation protection. We usually want to do measurement and calculate and uh, verify this with each other. <clears throat> Some of the basic terms that we use in radiation dosimetry include karma, which we, is an acronym for kinetic energy released per unit mass of a particular body. It talks about the ratio of the expectation value of the energy transferred to charged particles per unit mass at the point of interest, including radi radiative, I mean, radiative loss energy but excluding energy passed from one charged particle to another. And from the equation that we see, epsilon transfer means the transfer and the average transfer energy. And that is the difference between the incoming radiation energy minus the outgoing radiation energy. So those energy that comes in minus that one that is out plus the rest mass energy of the particles that are causing this uh, uh, energy deposition. We can also talk about average energy totally, in which case we consider the radiative energy R in minus R out plus R in due to charged particles that are created by the uncharged particles minus R route due to charged particles that were created by the uncharged particle that came in in the first instance. <clears throat> oh, by the substance U, I mean uncharged particle plus the rest mass energy of the particles. We therefore, de I mean, define the, the karma of a given radiation field as the differential average energy transfer per unit mass, which can be written as psi, which is the energy influence, which is a function of the mass energy transfer, and is a function of energy and the atomic number of the medium through which it is passing. We also define the dose, the absorbed dose, as the expectation value of the energy imparted to matter per unit mass. And that is the, what, we re, what is written in form of our equation. And this is equivalent to the average energy, the E, divided by the M. In radiotherapy, we also like to talk about percentage depth dose, in which case we have a reference point which we call D naught. And this reference point is usually defined. If you look at the graph of percentage depth dose, at that point where you have maximum dose, usually 
depending on the energy, about five millimeter or so from the surface. We define that and we find the ratio. Percentage of this is what we call the depth dose. Uh, given this basic term that I've mentioned earlier on, this diagram shows us that we have a spherical body coming in which a photon, or let's say, yeah, photon especially of energy H nu one coming in, suffer interaction at a distance inside the body, and a number of things occur. Let's assume that it's quantum scattering that occurred. Then we expect a scatter energy H nu two from this, I mean, from this photon. And the Compton electron is also scattered at another angle. As, it, as the electron moves in the body, there could be radiant energy being emitted due to the motion of charged particles. So we then link with H03 and H04. The idea now is to define what we mean by the average energy based on this diagram. So if you have this diagram, the average energy epsilon is equal to H01 minus the sum of H02 plus H03 plus T prime. Where T prime gives us the kinetic energy of the foot of the electron that was scattered from the point of uh, Compton scattering. And since no, uh, no mass loss, we, no mass energy loss or production of mass energy, let me put it that way, like in pure production, the uh, sigma T, e, I mean sigma Q is zero in this case. The same thing goes for E transfer. And we have H01 minus H02 plus zero. That is the energy that is transferred, not that the energy that is absorbed. There are two different things. The upper one giving us the average energy absorbed or deposited. The second E transfer, e transfer gives us the energy that was actually transferred to the electrons. And this energy is the incoming energy minus the scattered energy. And since so there's no pair production, zero is the energy uh, due to mass, is, uh, mass energy. And the other one is E transfer, sub, I mean superscript N, which is H01 minus H02 minus the possibility of other radiations being emitted due to uh, radiative uh, emission by the charged particle that is moving at very high speed from zero. Like we said, like I mentioned earlier on in the introduction, the, accept those, uh, the acceptable dose heterogeneity was, def was defined as plus 7% to minus 5% of the prescribed dose. In, that is generally speaking, if we are not talking about the IMRT case, which means this dose cannot be less than the uh, prescribed dose minus 5% and should not be greater than this prescribed dose plus 7%. This require quite uh, uh, a, a precise dose measurement. So those are reported as the, we, the, we report in our, I mean, in the radiotherapy department, the minimum dose to the PTV, which is the target volume, uh, the, uh, I forgot about that. Uh, the plant, I mean, the plant, target volume, and the maximum dose to the plant target volume. 
the mean dose to the plant target volume, then we need to have the data for modal dose, median dose, and the dose at the various ICRU reference point that is at plus seven percent or minus five percent or at a uh, two p uh, p two percent. I mean D two percent and D ninety eight percent has to be well uh, uh, stated out. So the basic consideration that we need to put into our dosimetry work include, I mean, dose accuracy. We have to make to make to make our accurate our measurement. Use the a very good, well calibrated equip. I mean, equipment to be able to decide. I mean, to be sure of the accuracy of our uh, of our measurements. Radiation physics interaction also has to be well understood by a dosimetrist. And the radio radiobiology is also very important because we need to be sure of the uh, non-target uh, comp computation probability and the target computation probability. We have to be sure that all our all the tissues, all the tissues at our risk during radiation, or the organs at risk, has to be taken into account. Then we need to be sure of our radiation detection. What type of instrument do we use for our radiation detection? Our exposure can be external. In which case, the source of radiation is outside, like in radiotherapy. It can be external contamination, especially for earth physicists working in a in a nuclear center or somewhere where uh, or nuclear medicine, where uh, what I would call open sources are in use. A given patient or a given worker can be contaminated. I mean, the surface, the surface can be contaminated. You can have surface contamination. This is still external contamination. And we need to have the theory that we can use to estimate the dose to the uh, exposed person. We can also have internal contamination, which range between uh, what I would call nuclear medicine, so radiation, I mean, earth physicists that are looking at uh, workers from, say, a mining industry, where radon is of uh, high importance in close quarters. People will normally breathe in this radon and it will deposit in the lungs and be distributed in various parts of the body, and we may need to determine the dose due to this. In a radiotherapy, uh, in a radiotherapy setup, there are the symmetry check before radiation is delivered. We don't just, I mean, you don't just uh, get the uh, prescription and determine the dose. I mean, the distribute the simulation you simulate and do uh, a therapy planning without a check and balance. In this uh, uh, slide, we show this the type of check and balance that is required that is possible in such a situation. We have consultation, which is a clinical decision, and uh, a medical. A medical man, an MD man, a multilateral conference will take place, which will include in all the social workers, etc. And a decision is made. And this decision is taken to a simulator, which includes the MD, the physicist, and the therapist, simulates the treatment and make it uh, a radiotherapy treatment plan. This will be also checked again. Whatever comes out of the uh, radiation treatment planning 
is also to be checked by a physicist. So you check and see whether you have there's an error. If there is an error, then this is thrown back to the beginning. And uh, to, uh, starting probably from uh, simulation, then a final uh, chart is produced and treatment follows till the end of the treatment, which is ascertained by both the MD and the physicist. Radiation measurement is done by a few types of uh, dosimeters. Chief among them is the ionization chamber. But for personal purposes, radiography films and thermoluminescent dosimeters, as well as diodes, are, I mean, well, radiography films may not be in use now. But thermoluminescent dosimeters, as well as diodes, for real-time measurement are currently in use. But for radiotherapy purposes, especially for beam calibration purposes, a very well-calibrated ionization chamber uh, is the, is the uh, equipment of preference. We have... Uh, some diagrams of some of these uh, ionization chambers, which is basically a thimble, a pencil-like uh, object that has air or some gas, I, I mean, enclosed in the volume of the, of the, in the chamber in the volume. And we have internal to it, a collecting electrode that is usually made of uh, aluminum and a body that is usually made of graphite act as uh, uh, the, the, uh, the second part of the electrode, the outer electrode. The charge that, I mean, when radiation hits the air chamber, <clears throat> ionization takes place. We have charge, we, have, we could have charge transfer. We have possibly just charge is, I'm sorry, my voice is, I lost my voice. Um, yeah, a positive charge can be taken up by a neutral um, molecule or a neutral atom. And then we have a positive ion or a negative charge is taken up and we have negative ion. So we have uh, what we call a pair production. Or, and within the system, we can have the combination. It depends on whether the charges were taken. And it depends on whether the charge were taken, I mean, were collected by the central. Uh, if the voltage is not good enough, recombination is possible because the electrons start to uh, diffuse through the volume and can, if not taken up by the uh, central electrode, then it can recombine. So measurement of absorbed dose requires the measurement of the mean energy imparted. Once we see the electrons that have been measured and uh, that have been collected, we can determine the energy that has been absorbed within the timber. Such interaction processes normally result in creation of ion pair which are collected at the uh, central uh, collecting electrode. This is uh, a much uh, clearer example, I mean, image of uh, an ionization chamber. We have an air field measuring volume, and we have radiation hitting the stem of the uh, ionization chamber and creating ion pair, positive and negative charges. Once the amount of uh, charge is recorded in our electrometer, then it's easy for us to determine the dose. If sensitive volume is usually just like I've said, and the dose in air will now be given as Q divided by that, which is the charge, the quantity of charge per, per 
mass of air that is in the timber multiplied by the average energy required to produce uh, a, I mean, ion pair in air divided by E, which is the electronic charge. We see that doing that, we are able to determine the number of ion pair that are produced, and that is the Q upon E. And when we multiply it by the average energy required to produce that ion pair, then we know the amount of energy deposited inside the timber, and therefore dividing it by M air means that we have the dose to air. But that is not what we actually want to measure. When we are measuring, uh, we want to measure dose in the human tissue. So what we need will be to have something that we call human tissue equivalent or soft tissue equivalent. And in radiotherapy, water is used as this. And uh, we now convert the dose in air to dose in that material in which we inserted the ionization chamber. And that dose is the dose in air multiplied by the stopping power in water divided by the stopping power. I mean, mass stopping power in air that we, uh, according to Brad Gray's uh, law, will give us the dose inside the uh, water that we are trying to measure the dose. Another type of system that is used to measure dose, but basically for personal dosimetry or for experiment, experimental purposes, is the thermoluminescent dosimeter, which is generally made up of some um, phosphor, which are actually insulators. Uh, these phosphors, we expose it to radiation, it is up to activate the fluorescence, and the heat, uh, the radiation, I mean, light comes out from the heated phosphor and can be counted using a PM tube or whatever is present in the system in the TLD reader. And from this, if the, if the reader is well calibrated, usually we expect them to be calibrated against it. The secondary, just like uh, the, just like the ionization chamber, they are all expected to be calibrated against a secondary standard. And as we know, this secondary standard exists at the National Institute of Radiation Protection and Research at the University of Ibado. This secondary standard is also calibrated against the primary standard in Europe, in Vienna to be precise. And this is make, it, make the measurement that we make and make out the dose that we measure to be traceable to an international uh, uh, reference point. This international reference point gives us the assurance that the dose that we are reporting, the dose we are delivering is traceable. It's very important in dosimetry to have your dose traceable. That is, if that dose is measured here, the same dose will be measured in London or Paris or any other uh, or in Accra, any of that uh, uh, laboratory, especially. For if our interest in tissue equivalence, the uh, lithium 100, lithium fluoride uh, activated with magnesium, I mean, and, and titanium is very good. And lithium borate is also very good as tissue equivalent material. And this can be used for personal monitoring. If sensitivity is, our, is of our interest, like we want to do environmental uh, dose measurement, then such, I mean, phosphorus like aluminum oxide, doped with carbon and calcium fluoride, doped with manganese can be of a, uh, uh, can be used 
for this purpose or this this measurement another set of uh, uh dosimeters are the diodes they are usually the real time measuring equipment they have very small size with high sensitivity and we can get instant readouts with little with just a simple instrumentation to charge and then come back, things like that. Usually, we apply for an in vivo dosimeter. Although their calibration varies with temperature, and their sensitivity is a function of accumulated dose. So the more you use it, the less sensitive it becomes. An example is the silicon diode and the metal oxide MOSFET dosimetry uh, uh, system, dosimetry system. Silicon diode has a PN junction with a counter doped surface. You dope it with an, a, a, P, a P material with an N material. And when you expose it to ionizing radiation, it produces flow of charged particles, which will result in a measurable signal. And if this signal can be converted or built, I mean, after calibration to uh, dose. The same thing goes for metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. So, exposure to ionizing radiation results into generation of charge carriers. This one will flow towards the silicon substrates where they are eventually trapped and measured. So why is radiation dissymmetry important? The idea is the absorbed dose determines the tumor control probability. We know that radiation can kill cells. And we know that tumors are made of living cells. So a given amount of dose to this cell can be used to control the tumor, can be to kill the, the tumor cells. Well, well, the unfortunate part of it is that normal tissue also will be affected. So we talk about organs that are at risk when we expose a patient to ionizing radiation. We need to be able to control the dose, the dose at the various points inside the patient. Otherwise, you, will, you may not be able to control the tumor or we may be killing useful tissues or useful organs by overdosing. So the dose must be precise. And if we see that in most cases, the tolerance is just about two to 3%. Two to three percent lower than the uh, uh, prescribed dose, or two to three percent higher than the prescribed dose. For this type of tight um, tolerance, then precision and accuracy become very important. We have a lot of challenges in the symmetry. The first of them being that paying attention to beam calibration is very, very important. Paying attention to the target volume, making sure that the radiation uh, actually. Uh, how do I put it? Actually, meet, I mean, it's in tandem with the target volume is very important. And this is where pediatric radiotherapy is very is uh is very troublesome. Children are very, very small with small organs. To be able to control 
I mean, to, con to constrict the radiation to the what to the target polio with that unnecessarily affecting other uh, organs can be very, very difficult for the pediatrics. So it is uh, uh, research in progress for efficiency in dosimetry for pediatric radiotherapy. This closeness of the organ of interest to the primary radiation field can create problems. Dynamic nature of the body system, we are always uh, breathing in and out with organs moving. And we, our patients are not necessarily same, I mean, uh, static. They are always moving. Especially when they have to, to go through a long radiation period, or if they are naturally restless because of their illness. Effectiveness of phantom for personalized treatment. This is evident in patients with other underlying health issues. We might require to use phantoms to do our, I mean, to be sure we can, of, our, of, the, do, of the dose we are delivering to the patient. But is this effective? Does it have the same depth as the depth in the patient? Is, are they the same tissue that are in the patient? We know that the various tissue in human, uh, I mean, there are various tissue types in the human body. And there's a limit to which we can have our phantom uh, our phantom replicating the human body. Then the knowledge base of the symmetries is uh, not a static uh, matter, it's or uh, is developing, and people need to con the dosimetrics need to continue to upgrade their knowledge in the area of those, the, uh, those calculations and uh, those delivery. Future development in dosimetry include comparison of clinical simulations. So radiation absorbed in a living subject, like humans or animals. Is it possible for us to put some TLD in some patient before exposure and determine whether the planned dos doses were actually met by the actually delivered doses? This is an area that need to be looked into. And I'm thinking of uh, putting a student in that, in that line very soon. We also have problem with dosimetry of every charged particles. The profile, the depth profile for charged, every charged particle is very, very interesting and uh, very, uh, I mean, the, uh, it's very encouraging for the treatment of uh, uh, of uh, deep-seated cancer. Why did I say this? Is because of the profile. Skin and outer organs sparing is very much possible when charged particles are used. If we I'm sorry I didn't put a diagram on the on this, but if you irradiate, say, a water phantom with charged particles, we find out that most of the energy are deposited at a very small area inside the, the water phantom. The, in this area where the you have the highest energy deposition is what we call the Bragg peak. The implication of this to uh, clinical radiotherapy is that if charged particles are used, we can tune the beam to a point where we have the, the cancer and spare all other organs 
surrounding the uh, uh, the the cancer tissue because before the cancer the level of radiation is low after the cancer it drops virtually to zero so anything beyond that is uh, probably lost i mean it's probably safe from radiation so we have all the energy will be deposited within a given volume and just by tuning the energy of the charged particle, you can tune the depth at which the bright peak will occur in that area. However, measuring the dose can be uh, uh, very fast. Another thing is neutron dosimetry. There are uh, ionization chamber that will measure neutron dos doses. And there are TLD like lithium-6, I think, lithium-6 fluoride. I mean, where you accentuate the isotope of lithium-6 in your lithium fluoride that can be used for the neutron dosimetry. Neutron-2 is a possible, I mean, it's a heavy nuclear matter. It's a possible, uh, radiation for radiotherapy. Usually you have boron meal given to the patient and you target those area with the barium meal with your neutron and most of the energy of the neutron will be, I mean, will be captured. You have captured, uh, you have uh, those neutron captured in the boron and it radiate the volume concerned with the highest amount of doses that you can uh, deliver. Um, even uh, neutron dosimetry is even also necessary in, in uh, LINAC, especially for the low atomic number and high energy range, uh, low atomic number materials around the, the edge of the uh, LINAC, as well as the energy of the photon that is coming out, you can have neutron production. And neutron can contaminate the radiation and therefore disturb the dosimetry that was calculated for the, for the patient. So we also have some neutron contamination. We expect to have neutron contamination in LINAC, and this needs to be uh, area for future study. <clears throat> These are my references, and I thank you very much for listening. And I will uh, take questions from here. Thank you. <clears throat>